Most people's first encounter with EMC happens at the end of a project. You've gone through the design, the development, the writing the software, the sourcing the components, the design of the PCB. You're almost ready to get to market. You're almost ready to press go. And then the last thing you do is you take your product to the EMC test laboratory and it fails. Worst case scenario, what do you do? Ideally, you would have started off the project and thought about EMC from the very start. Good EMC compliance starts at the beginning of the product, at the same point at which you're thinking, what is my product going to do? What country is it going to be shipped in? What is the fundamental design of it? That is the point at which you need to start considering the EMC performance of the product. A good way to do this is to employ experts to perform a design review of your product. Why would you want to do this? I myself have seen many products come through this laboratory. A lot of them have common problems that could have been solved at the design stage. Maybe it's an op-amp circuit that has no AC bandwidth restrictions. Maybe it's the lack of a common mode choke in a key place. Maybe it's as simple as just putting some resistors and capacitors in certain locations in the circuit to restrict the amount of emissions that could potentially come from the device and be radiated out on a cable. There are lots of little things that you wouldn't necessarily consider when you're designing a circuit, but from an EMC perspective, make a huge difference. And this is the point of a design review, to fix these problems before they become problems. If you wait until the last minute, the worst case is that you might have to redo your CAD, send out for new boards, build new boards, test new boards. Not only the physical cost implication, but also the impact on the time it takes to get your product to market. It can make or break designs. I've been personally involved with several projects where people have been ready to start production and are having to scrap boards, to rework boards, and finding EMC fixes to rework boards can be really tricky. You often end up having to spend hours cutting traces, adding components, all with associated cost. And this can all be avoided by considering EMC from the start of the project. So what form might a review take? Typically, we'll look at the schematics. It's fairly easy to identify key nets from the schematics, clock lines, memory buses, anything that interfaces to something that has a cable connected to it that goes to the external world. Cables, or antennas, as we like to call them in the EMC world, are one of the biggest problems that you'll find. Lack of shielding, poorly specified, not terminated correctly, the list goes on. We also look at the circuit board. The circuit board really is where the EMC performance for the system is crystallized. Noise sources that create EMC problems are on the circuit board. How that noise can escape to the outside world is dictated by the design of the circuit board. Lack of good ground planes is often cited as the main cause for emissions problems. It also has a big effect on immunity as well. So getting your circuit board design right is key. Mechanical design of the enclosure is also important. If you're relying on the enclosure to perform any kind of shielding, to perform any kind of diverting of RF currents away from sensitive circuits, you need to consider the paths that those currents might take. You need to consider how metallic components are connected to each other. Do you have a painted surface? Is the screw biting into the metal correctly? There are many, many different factors to be considered with that. A trained eye will quickly spot any of these 